In continuation with the previous lecture, we will be starting now with the topic of folds. Now, in, the, in this structure that you see uh, is called as fold. You can see a fold which is happening here, right? The structural geology of this would be called as folds. So, how are they formed? Here we have sedimentary bedding layers and uh, yeah, first of all, I would like to talk about the sedimentary rocks. We, when we were talking about sedimentary rocks in the few lectures before, we talked that how they cover most of the earth, right? So most of the phenomena are actually related to sedimentary rocks. And that is why here we choose uh, to study sedimentary rock and how folding happens in those kind of rocks. So here we have beds of uh, sedimentary rocks when due to tectonic plate movement this is considered to be one of the major reasons of uh, why folds happen so tectonic plate movement a lateral compressive force is applied from both the sides and this is what is going to cause the folding of those uh, uh, beds or bedding planes right let us study parts of folds so these uh, legs that you see of the fold they are called as limbs okay this would be considered as one complete fold that is from year to year this will be called as one complete fold and one fold will have at least minimum two limbs then uh, the topmost part is called as crest the top of fold is called as crest and bottom of the fold is called as trough the point where maximum curvature can be found is called as hinge point. So maximum curvature will always be at the outermost point. So here this point is called as a hinge point. Now this will depend, uh, this will vary, this maximum curvature will vary for each bedding plane. So for the outermost bedding plane, this is the hinge point. For the inner bedding plane, this would be the hinge point. For this bedding plane, this would be the hinge point like that. If I take cross section xx, this is how it will look, correct? When I join the hinge points along the length, what I get is hinge line. So when rock occurs in sequence and they're all, this is I think there, they're all hinge points are joined together, they make a line called hinge line. So you can see this is a hinge line where all those hinge points are connected. Similarly for the second layer which we see here this green layer the hinge line would be here at this point and for the third layer it will be here. So what uh, we are basically doing here is that we are connecting points and we are forming a line. So by connecting points we do get a line. What do we get by connecting lines? By connecting lines, we would get a surface. So surface or a plane, right? When we connect lines, we get a surface or a plane. So hinge line when traced and by the way, when I'm meaning connecting lines, it means it doesn't mean that one from one point to other point we are connecting it. We are connecting it vertically. So if I connect these two lines, it will, it is going to form a surface. Correct. So and it is called as axial plane. So hinge line when traced throughout the depth of the rock, it forms a planar surface. It is called as axial plane. If the axial plane is planar in nature, the fold is called as a planar fold. What what do I mean by planar in nature? It means that it is it is not undulated. It is of straight a straight surface, a straight plane. Okay, that is called as a axial plane. What if the hinge points are not in the same same line? Then, then if I'm joining the lines together, if I'm joining these hinge lines together, what I'll be getting would be called as the axial surface. Just uh, take a note of these words properly. Earlier, it was axial plane. Now it is called as axial surface. Plane is when all the hinge points are, all the hinge lines are one below the other and they form a perfectly uh, horizontal plane. Axial surface would be 
If I have to draw it in 3D, it would be something like this. I hope you get So in 3D it would look a little bit... Let me give it a depth. So I hope you are getting this, what I have drawn here. So this would be called as an actual surface and uh, the previous one would be called as an actual plane. And hinge line when traced throughout the depth of the rock it forms an irregular surface it is called as actual surface if the actual plane is an irregular surface the fold is called as non-planar fold and in the previous one it was called as planar fold. Axis of fold it is the line parallel to the hinge line of the fold it is the intersection of actual plane with any bed of the fold. It is axis along which the fold is folded. So if uh, I, I try to draw a hinge, I try to draw, draw an actual plane, at whatever point this actual plane is cutting my uh, bed, I can draw a line from that point, correct? I can draw a line from that point at whichever point my actual, actual plane is going to cut my bed and that line which we draw would be called as the axis of the fold and it is along this axis that the fold is folded. Next is what we call as the plunge of the fold. The axis of fold may be horizontal, inclined or even vertical in its geometrical position with respect to other parts of the fold. This inclination measured on a vertical plane is called as plunge. So it is not necessary that the axis of the fold will be always horizontal. It can be inclined as well. So if I see in the longitudinal section that is if I see from this side view my fold is going to look something like this and the axis of the fold will be this is the axis of the fold correct and this is the horizontal so whatever angle it is making with the horizontal that is called as plunge so for a perfectly horizontal uh, axis the plunge would be zero right if the um, if I could draw it correctly yeah if the this is the axis of fold then plunge would be obviously zero classification of fold we have two classification first is anticline second is syncline the strata that are arched upwards is called as an anticline so you can see these how they are arched upwards and syncline the strata that are arched downwards is called as an syncline a simple uh, classification nothing more in this so in a fold folded pattern you will most most of the times you will encounter both an anticline as well as a syncline so what type of fold do you think this is it is it is like this right so it it has to be an anticline what type of fold is this? It is a syncline fold. Let us differentiate between anticline and syncline. So the strata that are arched upwards are called as anticline. The strata arched down, um, I'm sorry, this has to be downwards. And this is I think concave upwards concave upwards or convex downwards concave upwards or convex downwards both would be fine the geologically older rock occupy position in the interior of the fold and oldest being position at the uh, core of the fold and youngest rock forming outer of the fold so in anticline this would be the oldest one this is the oldest which is at the core which is at the interior of the fold and this would be the youngest one this 
the in this incline it is reversed this is the youngest one which is at the interior and this is the oldest one which is which is outside basically and this this uh, bifurcation is when you look it from the top okay so young one is outer outside in, in anticline and uh, old one is outside in syncline this uh, basically means the same thing that i explained here the limbs dip away from the crest so let me just erase everything the limbs dip away from the crest means this is the crest and these are the limbs they are going away from the limb away from the crest and if this is the trough so the limbs are dipping towards the trough next are the types of uh, fold first one we have is symmetrical so in this the limbs are of equal length and uh, they dip equally in opposite direction uh, almost 45 degrees such a uh, such a fold is called as a symmetrical fold second asymmetrical fold the limbs are not equal in length and dip unequally in opposite direction so all those folds anticline or syncline in which the limbs are unequal in length and they dip unequally on either side from the hinge lines are termed as asymmetrical folds next we have overturned fold these indicate severe degree of folding in which both limbs dip in same direction and one of the limb rotates more than 90 degrees so uh, what happens is you can see that there is a severe folding and one of the limb will actually rotate get rotated by 90 degrees or more than 90 degrees okay so this happens in the overturned folds these are the fold with in inclined axial plane in which both limbs are dipping essentially in the same direction and the amount of dip of two limbs may or may not be same so here there is a beautiful picture pictorial representation of all the folds next based on the inclination we have isoclinal that is these are group of folds in which all the axial planes are essentially parallel so you can see these axial planes which i have drawn through the hinge lines of of the respective crest and trough these are almost parallel to each other again this word clean clean uh, we have come across this word in the crystallographic axis and there i had also explained that this clean means to incline inclination that word is related to inclination so yeah here you can see the how the axial planes are almost parallel to each other if i if i try to draw the axial plane they are almost parallel to each other recumbent folds these are extremely overturned folds in which the axial plane attains a horizontal position so you can see here how it is attained in horizontal position in such fold one limb comes to lie exactly under the other limb so that a drill a hole dug at the surface in the upper limb passes through the lower limb so if i try to dig a hole from the upper limb it will pass through the lower limb as well lower limb is often called as inverted or reversed limb so we had seen in overturned folds that how one of the limb gets rotated more than 90 degrees so here also this this limb may get rotated um by by an angle more than 90 degrees let us study this in more detail so we have different uh, parts of this recumbent fold first part is called as shell it is outer zone made up of mostly sedimentary formation now this is the one which which you will be uh, viewing because we view the folds from this this point okay so this is the one that would be visible to you this is called as normal limb this would be called as an inverted limb this is arch it is zone of curvature corresponding to crest and trough in the upright fold and these points would be called as root zone it is the basal part basal means meaning the one which is at the base of something and it may or may not be traceable so it means that this point uh, would be either very deep inside the soil 
or it would be somewhere it would be connected with other folds as well so it may or may not be traceable core is the inner part which is there inside this fold this part this is called as core so you can see the recumbent folds here now the actual plane is almost it has attained a horizontal uh, position next we have conjugate folds so this type of fold will have axis inclined in different directions and not parallel to each other so the actual planes they are not parallel to each other as compared to the isoclinal ones so you can see here we have one actual plane another one another one and they are essentially not parallel to each other so such kind of fold is called as conjugate fold then we have box fold it is a special type of conjugate fold in which the top is exceptionally flat and the limbs are inclined almost steeply so it almost looks like a box itself that is why the name box fold so that's it for today's lecture in the next lecture we'll be learning more classification of folds till then take care thank you